two presentations that we'll be doing for you. The first has to do with a uh, long range technology plan for the students of Wilson County. And the second, of course, uh, the big immediate need is we'll do a presentation on our budget plan for next year. The budget that the board has adopted. So you'll get to hear those. I do know that each committee has some business to take care of. So, budget comments on us? Yeah. Start first. We'll call the budget meeting order. You got a copy of the minutes in front of you. Uh, also, along with that, you have a set of the education committee meetings in front of you. Uh, if you've had an opportunity to look over my mic, I want to make a motion to get a second if we could to receive them as they are printed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Aaron? Yes, sir. No, sir. At this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Mickey Hall, my deputy director. Uh, I'll talk about our technology plan. This was presented to the board on June the 29th. I felt like it was really important because to make this plan successful, it will take the board, our staff, as well as the plan commission, to the of the plan when you look for this. This is an overall first time I've really presented this plan to the board in this kind of format. It, it's what we need to do to, to reach our kids for the 21st century uh, area of technology and how we deliver those services. Uh, we're going to break this presentation down into four different areas. Uh, we're going to talk about four pieces of this. Uh, we have our network infrastructure, devices, personnel, and assessment. Somewhat drive, driving this presentation is you probably heard the state talk about park. It's the online investment that our children will be having to take. We're already piled in now with the state of Tennessee. But to do that, you have to have building blocks. You have to have your network in place. You have to have devices for the kids to use. You have to have the personnel to do the training for the staff to get you to the online assessment. This is our current network structure that we have in place. We go from the internet out to the, what we call our hub room, and then we come out to the schools, the local area network. You can tell, when it talks about megs up there, 200 or 100, the thing about plumbing is like a pie. The smaller the number, the smaller the pie. This is what we have in place today uh, with our wireless access, and here's where we need to go. So what's these numbers change here? Notice the 200 number is the top of the 1.6. Gigs. So we're, we're making our network, we've got to go to eight times faster than what we've got right now for a pipe. A pipe is just the way the data comes into our school and goes back out to the internet. The way your internet works home is a little different than that. This is the way we're set. The little slide that's going in there just is bringing the online assessments from the wherever the state decides to bring this to us from in the internet into our network, into the classrooms for kids to take their tests and then go back out to the internet for them to be scored. Uh, our network infrastructure timeline, uh, if you remember in June, you all passed $500,000 budget amendment for us. Started our wireless access in all of our schools, so all of our schools by fall break, we hope will be wireless. Uh, we, we will update our four switches. Uh, we'll increase our bandwidth. We're, Putting things in place to make sure our network's very available, not paying it. We're working on the disaster recovery sites. And then also, that goes along with putting security out. 14 16, we have to get where we increase our bandwidth more. And you'll see that number in a minute. Uh, what we currently have out, out in our schools, teachers have workstations. They work from their desk. Very important. They have projectors, excuse the bias and there. They go to computer labs. Some schools have most cards. For the most part, they go to computer labs. So access is limited. The machine response systems are just clickers that they have out there that they do some testing with. This is where we would like to go in our technology. Every teacher would have a portable device. They'd have interactive whiteboards. They would control the student devices, what they're watching, what they're looking at. 
can have immediate feedback on the assessments. And it also allows the teacher and the kids to do visual collaboration. The student device is what we like to do there is not have computer labs anymore, checkout labs. Every student in this plan, when we've got code, we end up with an advice issue. They have all the textbooks online, they do all their assessments online, and it'll be a 24-7 learning environment for our kids. This is a rollout plan we again have presented to the board. As you know, all this depends on funding. So I think this is what we'd like to do. This would put a device in every student's hand. We would also put a device in every teacher's hand over a three year period. Uh, this slide here, I'll briefly touch on it. Basically, this is creating a committee within our school district that everyone would have to go through if they wanted to look at a new software. We could also look at the current software we have to see if we're utilizing it right. Should we be paying for it? Should we not be paying for it? I think we'll have to go through this committee before we can be allowed to enter. Then the network the devices. To go along with that, we need staff to support that. We need staff that to train our teachers on how to use it, to work with our teachers. Because the kids, most of the time, the kids know it better than we do. So we need our teachers to feel comfortable with it, just like our kids do. So what? Proposed to the board is that for every five, every fifty five hundred dollars, every fifty five hundred devices, we've had five instructional technology specialists. That would be people that would work directly with teachers on a daily basis. We need three technicians for fifty five hundred for fifty five hundred devices. I've been looking at the budget all day. Technology uh, technicians, and that's they would be out there on the ground in the schools when something happens with a device, they would be there to fix it. Network engineers takes care of the network side of everything. They're behind the scenes. A lot of folks really like to see them. And the technology communication specialist. We have to start communicating with our public through technology. Web pages, uh, Facebook, Twitter, different things like that. We do not have a position like this right now. Web pages and things like that. These folks who have our teachers know how to do that, how to communicate better with our teachers, and how to use that technology. This is probably a slide that I hope you remember. I don't remember any other slide, but our whole existence is around education and instruction. We take the network, we do a good network, we get the student kids the right devices, we train our teachers the right. Instruction is going to be great. Our instruction is great, the assessments will be great. When you go to online assessments, they now are 20% of the students grade. They're up to 50% of a teacher's evaluation. So this is a this is a very good deal for our students as well as our teachers. That we can implement this hopefully correctly and appropriately for our students and staff. This slide right here is just a phrase that we came up with as a team. But basically we don't want kids going in to take an online assessment and they've never seen a device. You watch your younger kids right now, they all work off the smartphone. They really don't know what a laptop is. They sure don't know what this desktop is. So what we, the way we propose this is that kids would have these devices every day. So if they, if they have it every day and they're used to it, they work off of it every day, they're doing their homework, they're doing their assessments. When they go in for the big online assessment, this is another day so walk into a room and they've never been there and they've never typed on the keyboard, they're going to have trouble with these online assessments. We want to make sure they don't have trouble with that. They don't want to take home with that. We can make it fully implemented. Remember, it's 24 7. Uh, we do this, the district will get immediate feedback from the students, teachers, parents. Uh, less than people have things, we have more classrooms available for instruction. And students with devices to create their 24 7 learning environment. We've got to get the digital content so it stays active. 
somewhere on the six year old taking soccer right from the textbook. That's not good. So it is the online assessments, yeah. online content for her with lots of materials for her. The last part is part. You'll hear a lot about it. You've probably seen it in the news. Some people will love it, some people hate it. In between is where we are. Uh, part is uh, the new assessment that's going to happen in the state of Tennessee and the governing body of the part. But it's built for halfway to college career readiness for all students. Uh, it creates high quality assessments to measure uh, common core standards. It supports educators in the classroom, it makes better use of technology. Advanced accountability. What the kids have to do is they're no longer going to go be able to go down a sheet when you were in school and bubble it in and draw a Christmas tree or dog or whatever. We're not going to do that. They've got to be able to do critical thinking and know what these subjects are going to work. We're, we're one of the governing states, one of the largely governing states that means we're piloting this, we're, we're being guinea pigs. I hope all of everything we've done for you so far in this presentation, we have to raise a bar for our kids. This whole presentation is about our kids, okay? It's not about anybody in the board office, principal's office. It's about our kids. That's who we want to see. The online assessments in the 2014-15 Testing was a, a four week. We have four weeks to test it. If every kid has a device, we can do that in a week. Which means we can do more instruction. We can assess it at the end of the four weeks. If we go to another option where it's recommended or minimum, we have to use four, four, four weeks of testing, three weeks of testing, and we can make it. But right now, it's a bad business. Here's a sample of the new question that's going to be out there. Uh, this is a third grade sample. Instead of picking one of these words that might be the right answer, you have to put them in the correct order in these assessments. This is a seventh grade sample, and you have to take each one of these boxes and figure out which speed's highest or lowest. Where our kids are going. They're going to go from this sheet right here. They're going to go from the bubble sheet. They're going to go to online assessment. We have to have, we have to prepare our kids. It all brings to the finish of work. But the 14, 15 years now, people will eventually by 17, 18, it all brings. That's why we go to the phase in period on the leasing of the computers. And then the other thing that if you remember on these assessments, those of you that's been here for a while, we've always asked for recycling program. We never have had that. This program goes into the media recycling program. You buy 30 computers for three years, and the fourth year, that first batch rolls out, and then you're back on the recycling program. It's also the way we've got it built up. It's sort of like a complete care package. If something happens with one device, it's just a cost that we we'll just pull it out, and give them a new one, we'll turn that back into the manufacturing. And our kids are still doing what they need to do on a daily basis. We currently do two assessments. We do a performance based assessment, 75% of the school year, and then we do the end of the year assessment, 90%. Some of you probably don't know this, but all, all of our teachers and principals do test a We do early assessments, benchmarking, that says three. Some teachers may do more than three, depending on what their subjects are and where their kids are. And that gets them to the performance based assessment year assessment. In high schools, that's twice a year because they're on block schedule. You've heard us call some decaps and all that. That's, that's the week. As you can tell, since 2010, we have had some form, our state has had some form of participation in the park. Getting to 14, 15. We didn't want to wait until 14, 15 to get everybody needing all this all these resources to be used. That's why we're making you all aware of the big picture. And then we're going to get here in a minute where what the board has presented to you all these questions. So 
State of Tennessee has come out with some two guidelines, one 912 X. Basically, in this slide, you take the 10th grade because they have the most kids. You have to have 465 devices to be testing in 19 different areas, 19 classrooms to do in this one store. The minimum required number of testing dates, we have to be testing 4,279 kids. The plan that we presented to you as far as rolling everything out over three years would be this amount of money. We can still need 271,000 to finish our infrastructure the first year. The devices you can tell are even the spreads we there. That's at least three. And the staff would be the Structural technology specialist we talked about, computer technician, communications technician, and the network engineers. Again, this would get us on a true recycling program, device that every kid's in, device that every teacher's in. So they all are doing the same thing and communicate. The recommended plan, this is not a lease, but this would be a two one ratio. First slide was 16,500 devices for our kids, 1,200 for teachers. This slide is roughly 8,000 devices for kids. Record then we go to the minimum. This is what's in our budget. The board has adopted the minimum option at this time to request from the county commission to meet the minimum requirements for us testing. We'll have to use computer labs for a total of eight weeks. Not right now, the kids can test on paper in their classroom. Now, the computer lab will be tied up for eight weeks. This would, this would get us 2,041 classes to meet the minimum requirements for part of the test. Again, it's limited development of keyboarding skills because they don't have it every day. They will be used in different fashions. Have to use the full three weeks of testing under the minimum requirements and have that one week for maintenance for your not That don't sound like a lot, but you take up to the of testing on a computer, you're waiting around for three weeks of testing. That's, that's the end of the slide for the technology plan. We'll try to answer any questions. I know there's a lot of information we drew at, so we've had a lot of work on it right here. tested several devices and we had a PowerPoint I'm going to show you. We tested this out in a group of kids. Uh, we had a fourth grader that developed a PowerPoint. We're not being told to do it. He did it almost before we got back around to the last kid and we tested this. And his last slide said the reason he was able to do that is because we gave him a device to do it. So these are the devices we're looking at that have been tested by kids, by teachers, and also our principals have looked at it as well. want to add we we showed you the whole plan even though our board voted to adopt the minimum plan just what we needed to meet the requirements for testing because the board had some other questions they wanted to know about what do we do with lost devices how do we handle that give us some examples of policies how can teachers use these in the classroom to better the instruction that's going on on a daily basis so we committed to them that we would go get that research done, come back and do another present presentation to them. So we wanted you to see the whole plan. We wanted you to understand what we included in our budget. For us, that's a requirement. The minimum is required. We've got to do the park assessments. That's not a negotiable item for the powers that be at the Department of Ed. We have to do that. But it is a baby step toward the bigger plan that we present. So you will see the bigger plan again we just don't want it to be a surprise. This, this idea, this way of teaching young people is not going to go away. Um, just that question here about the amount of money we spend on textbooks. We spend over a million dollars a year on textbooks. You know, so, and they run out of, they get out of date, especially when we're looking at science and social studies books. Online books don't. What you do is you buy a license agreement, they're on the book, 
child has it, they're current all the time because that's part of your licensing agreement. We think that if the state of Tennessee pushes the publishers harder, they can negotiate us better pricing for online books versus printed books because they don't have the production costs. So we think that there's a, there becomes a tipping point where it's just as cheap to have online textbooks and devices as it is to have hardback <coughs> books. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but I think if Wilson County is serious about providing the highest quality of instruction for their children and preparing them for what they will do after they leave our schools, technology has to be a part of that. I mean, utilizing technology as a consumer has to be part of what we teach and how we teach. So you'll see this plan again and again and again. So this was kind of the preview. Well, part of the advice is the support staff, technology specialists, that's their job is to train our teachers on how to use the technology correctly, but we want their to and also have the kids the other way. Really, all you have to do, you'd be surprised if you put that device in front of the kids. We did it in front of the fourth grade clients. They were logging in and making pictures of the web pages for what came the last year. They're not going to be afraid of it. Teachers right out of college are not afraid of it. Some of our other teachers need to go. That's, that's why. I don't need years. <laughs> well, why we, that's why we presented it this way. Hey, right, baby. It's, it's, building, it's building blocks, but you've got to have a good network that's reliable so they don't get frustrated. You've got to have the right devices, so they have the right number of devices so the kids will be able to have back access to everything. On top of that, you've got to support them. You just can't open the boxes and throw it out there and not be expecting it. Also, uh, technicians that will handle the hardware. It's also the network engineer to make sure everything behind the scenes on that first slide you saw, everything is going through this way. That's what the network engineer does. So, a big piece to it, too, is our communication with our parents. Our parents are more mobile now. They love to talk to the internet, web pages, Facebook, Twitter. We haven't done that because we don't have people to monitor. Before that kind of technology, you've got to have people to monitor. react to a lot of stuff that we don't talk about. I'm not going to talk about it. But our kids, I'll just leave it. Our kids are very creative. Okay. Especially in this area. It's really scary how creative they are. We have to do a better job of managing that. The right tool is the right tool to be ready for this year. But if we do that on a better basis, we give them great instructions, assessments of business. And all that puts together the package. We'll just do what you hear. that you saw there is a complete purchase of 2,041 devices. We, what we've done, we talked this afternoon, is we're going to pull a number together about at least what that would do. Uh, so part of that number that you see up there is also the staff to support those devices and train our teachers on the technology side of it and then finishing out our network infrastructure. You've got to have that with you, at least the time. Yes, sir. $400,000 extra for the lease. That's not in the place Well, we're going to run that number uh, in one of the one meetings. That was $500,000 for the devices. If I remember right. And then about leasing, if you go to the lease right, you get to put care in there where if something happens with the device, which is one of the concerns of the board, if I hang you a device and you try to sell it, we've got to have policy and contracts in place with the parents. We're going to come get the money from you. The other thing that's nice about these devices is there's technology built in them that if somebody does take it and try to sell it or whatever, we can trace it. If somebody turns it on, it's going to get a network, we'll know where it's at, we'll get notified, we'll go get it, or we'll attempt to do it. But we will know where it's at. Uh, we'll have some kids that will try that. But 
the board will have to adopt a very good set of policies and do a lot of work the contract line for the parents to sign off on when they get this device. Any more questions on that? budget packet, you should have had four documents. You had four for the general purpose school fund, school federal project fund, central cafeteria fund, and extended school program fund. Um, on the general purpose school fund, some of this you can follow up on the, the screen for the public to look at, but if you'll flip the pink sheet in your general purpose school fund packet, that's sort of where I'm going to be first. This is the sheet I've always prepared for, for these both committees, but it reconciles the 12-13 budget to the 13-14 budget. Um, if you all remember, we balanced our budget last year using $4.1 million dollar fund balance for recurring items, so that's our starting point. At $1.6 million in step increases in matching benefits, increase in property and cash with work comp premiums, uh, increase in the number of people in our retiree insurance. State raises uh, benefits of 911,000. Uh, a new position for a director for academic instruction uh, in the budget and have uh, instruction group on the side of the house. Uh, increase for PARC, which we just discussed, 126. Uh, increase for technology infrastructure. If you've heard the governor talk, he, he always tells you all he gave everybody $51 million for technology. He gave Wilson County $845,000. So it's not $51 million. Uh, that's our portion. You'll see that on the revenue and expenditure side. It's money in and money going back out. The board adopted a plan. We have to adopt a plan for that and submit it to the Department of Education before we get that money. They did that at the last meeting and uh, Tom submitted that. Tom their technology director, by the way, when I refer to Tom. Uh, he submitted that to the bank of the state. That money, that money goes to build the infrastructure. That first slide in the room, the five hundred you gave us in June, that's for the water and all the building wireless. This goes in to build our routers, and our switches, and our bandwidth out of the school. It's getting us. You remember, we have two hundred May. We're going to get one more city, so that's part of this. Two hundred seventy-one thousand. We're opening four new schools this year, not three. Let everybody hear that. We're opening four schools this year, not three. We'll get west in two weeks, and west west in two weeks. Contrary to what some people have said. Uh, we're going to go one way or the other. Uh, Rutland will open in October. Rutland was always scheduled to be in October. It's never been uh, August 1st day. Those buildings are on time. Watertown, we will get in April or March. Probably March. Some people don't think that's it. It's it in that budget year. We have to insure it. We have to clean it. We have to provide new buildings. So all those things are in the opening of new schools is a million and eighteen thousand. New revenues to the EP is two point eight million million dollars in growth. If you remember at the end of June we got some growth money that you all approved.
look at the actual numbers, just remember in payroll line items, uh, substitute teachers are in a different line items. So we have a lot of teachers that don't leave. We had some positions that were filled up here. We see the difference between actual and payroll. That's the primary reason uh, in those payroll line items. On the blue sheet that's attached right behind that one, <coughs> the board adopted this as their needs assessment. Uh, 3.1 million to balance the budget is the first item. Here, I know a lot of you called me. I know you've got questions from our employees. We started charging for the first time since the mid 80s for insurance this year of $700 a year. Uh, the board has put that on the needs assessment. That's $1.3 million in the joint purpose school fund. Our summer roofing program is $530,000. And for information, 1% uh, raise for teachers. And about $675,000, 1% for support staff, $150,000. We've been asked before about this information for bus drivers and part time workers who have access to repair hair clinics. That tells you the amount of money that that would take. And I know, uh, Mr. Rich and I have talked about this several times, but next July, the Senate Federal Government earned 67000 for the affordable care act. Uh, basically, they have a fund exchange. Bottom two notes, uh, again, we will have a football in Watertown High School in 1415. We will have a new middle school in Watertown in 1415. That will occur new operating cost for the administration of that school, cleaning services for a full year at the high school, full year of utilities, full year of insurance. As we, we have added a lot of square feet over the last several years, but we will not really increase maintenance or technology. That, uh, take care of those facilities. If this technology plan is funded, the technology side of the house will be taken care of. Uh, but so those are the notes. The other blue sheets are just the, the final three pages of that PowerPoint that tells you what the overall program of the master plan was for technology, along with the recommended amount and the minimum amount. And I'll try to answer any questions you all got. Mayor Dr. Sutter. Increased 
about 258,000. That's the technology plan, 1.1 million for the support staff inside that one million for 26. And then 72510 fiscal services supervisor increased by 28,000. That's the second deputy director of business operations that he's requested. What are you working on? You're working off the budget. When do you think he's off his notes? Okay. Yeah. Say it one more time. Say it by 210. Yes. So, there, so in the central office organizational structure, there will be two deputy superintendents, one for business operations, one for academics. They will each uh, be paid $120,000 plus benefits. Okay. 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 Um, one of the things that I've I've heard to the uh, us losing some of our math EAs, reading EAs, or coaches. Uh, what's what's going on with that? At this time, there's no nothing that's been recommended to the board or approached to the board because this is their budget. This is the budget they're asking to be funded. So nothing has been decided by the board of education. It depends on what happens with your committee. If this budget's funded, if this budget stays intact, if it's not, then as you would know, the balanced budget we're asking for 3.1 million. If you don't do that, then some decisions will have to be made and that'll be up to the board of what they decide to go. Because I know that the the funding for those positions, the math EAs, reading EAs, the coaches, the graduation coaches, and some of our other personnel. The funding from the federal side of that ended over a year ago, right? That's right. And <coughs> we poured out fund balance last year. And uh, so we had them this past year. And the math, you know, I'm, all of them, I feel like all of them are, are very important for the educational process in Wilson County Schools. Um, but especially those that are in our school buildings. And I would, I'd really hate to see those individuals um, go anywhere because they're good for our kids. And we, we, we would agree with that wholeheartedly. There, and there's not a, a single principal that I've spoken to on my visits. I haven't made it to every school yet. <coughs> We're halfway finished. Uh, has echoed that same sentiment. I committed to my leadership team that we would not make any recommendations to the board for possible budget cuts if, if it comes to that without uh, long conversation uh, that, that Mr. Hall and I would not go sit behind those doors and craft those budget cuts and take that to the board. That would be a team decision. So, so you're saying that Pink piece of paper here. If it is, if it is passed as it is, with a difference, of the school board still have to kick in two point seven million dollars. That is correct. That these positions would be safe or not safe. Uh, we have not made any decisions. On that. Although I'm sorry, but we have not made any decisions on this. What Dr. Sellers was talking about, he has a leadership team meeting every Monday, and he told them that and us. But to answer your question the way you asked it, if the budget that we're asking for tonight is approved and funded, the answer to, to your question would be no, we would not cut those positions. We would not need to. Over how the county commission does that budget. So 
if there's money that you all elect to shift around to make this, to fund this, you know, that's at your mutual discretion. We don't have it. So I just want to have it. I just want to make sure you know it. One point, I know we've talked about, but if you look, if I go back to your pink sheet, you will notice that you all thought it was not pledging anything for growth and property tax. We did not do that. We did not set zero. Well, the question is, do you, uh, for the for the DAs and the green folks, I know you got to put the folks again for the public and all the rest of it. How much are you talking about? What's the cost of the green man things? Yeah, the DAs and the folks. Green man coach is already there. Okay. So there are 28 of those people. 28. They gave us 2.6 million dollars for that period. Of time. They gave us 2.6, not for EAs, but in total. Right? We bought a lot of other things other than just EAs. But, uh, they paid for them for two years, and we, we, we did it for one year. It's roughly 800,000. How much? How much growth is the school supposed to get? Uh, it was about half a million. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the SRO program. I think that's been. I've heard two or three different versions of how this all come out. I think it's, it's because I can prove one vote. But I think first and foremost, that's the first thing you have to do is form the SROs. If you, you guys requested it, along with the schools, this the special school district who was paying for their own. But what's that number here? Oh, oh gosh, Mike. I just off the top of your head. I'm not going to hold you to it. Uh, Let's see, it's about it's about fifty six thousand and we've got what about sixteen million? Uh, no, every state is going to fund that.
specified. We got to submit a plan. They had to approve the plan before we on that way of what we're talking about.
also got to figure out a way to, to meet that mandate. I don't disagree with it at all. And ours is a county mandate that the state approved, so it's pretty close to what the state's on. That's right. And if we had a good, easy choice for cuts or to prevent a gap like this, a $3 million gap, or $3.5 million, include the roofing project, we present a balanced budget tonight. We're close to it. We don't have a good million dollar cut that isn't going to hurt someone. Uh, so it comes down to laying off employees, employees not giving step in, charging employees for health insurance that have to pay their bills. I want you to, to 
recall the conversation here this evening. Neither Nikki nor I said that education assistance were the, the first item. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm but, I mean, but it keeps coming up. I understand. Let me and let me tell you where that. Let me tell you the history on that. And Wendell talked about it just a few minutes ago. Those were grant funded positions. When the grant money went away, typically those positions go away. But the district made a decision because they were proven to be effective, that they needed to fund those. How did they do that? They spent over $4 million of fund balance last year to balance the budget. So we're at the point now where we don't have that latitude in fund balance. We don't have that much money. So we're hurting. So the expectation is, well, you hung, hung on to them for a year, maybe it's time they go now. Again, I commit to you, we're going to make the decision about what recommendations to take to the board that are going to be the best decisions for children. Now, I thought we already knew about that. Though. I thought we knew about the coaches and all that. We knew that there was grant money. And I thought oh, we understood we that. Knew that. We knew that. We knew when we got that. We knew when it was over and it was done. It was gone. At some point, it's become our responsibility to take care of it. So I don't understand. I mean, I know we don't have the money. Don't know how we oh, yeah, got money to take care of it. Oh, well, we got an eraser or we've got money. One way or another. But I just don't understand why now it all seems like it's so brand new that we didn't know that we were going to have to do this. So the federal government basically told us we're going to do this for X number of years, and that point forward is your way to deliver. So, I mean, I know we don't have it. don't know how we're going to get there. I, I don't have a clue, but it's my understanding of the news is coming. But I'll that, Mark. I'll that, Mark. I'll say this. The school board is the only budget that we choose to accept this budget. The question was asked a while ago in the 
white pages, some of the some of the things that you classify as needs that are over and above the current status quo budget are already in there, correct? Correct. Okay. Have they been designated in some way? Have they been clarified? Because you've got notes at the bottom of each page. That's correct. Are those? They're not called out on each page. Not by single line, but they are on the page. For example, the board adopted salary schedules. <coughs> Raised. Those are no longer needs. They have contractual obligations. Property casual insurance, work comp, contractual obligation for retiree insurance, contractual obligation. Uh, the technology is, we get it over there to uh, increase in the new building. I uh, have a choice that we've got to open the building. We're not going to build $70 million of the building. We're not open. So we've got to eat, cool, and clean, and take care of it. And the insurance side of it. The revenue. All revenue items on that sheet, all four of them are from the state of Tennessee and some sales tax. Uh, new teachers, we've got to do that for growth. And you think that special ed teachers are federal mandates for IEPs for our special ed students in our district. So it depends on what you want to call it. Most, everything on this big sheet is a contractual obligation. With the exception of the technology. So with that being said, let me ask you, the education committee would like to make any recommendations to take back to the board? I'd like to ask one question for the education committee. Vicki, I want you to clarify something for me. Our last meeting, we had the education committee. They brought us a line. Um, it wasn't active, so we 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we, and we make a lot of, a lot of policies and science committee about a lot of policies and science, but, but I would have made a lot of policies mm -hmm. and to do things. Okay, but, you know, the, the contract that Well, we're not talking about, I'm not talking about positions here. I'm talking about the... the Opening the new schools. Opening okay. okay. yeah. the half percent raise instead. But still, though, it's not. It's playing fair game on the table. They need to come back with us with the status quo budget with the needs. That's your formal motion. That's formal motion. That's formal motion. That's formal motion. Is that what we're trying to read? 
Yes. Yep. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. That's what we're going on. Yes. Yeah. So that's what. That's what. That's what. That's what the amendment is, and that's what we're voting on. Do I have the consensus of the education committee? Everybody understand? Everybody on the same page? Everybody understand what they're voting on? Is that correct? I'm misunderstanding. I'm going to write you down the hall and call me a bunch of dirty little names. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. All, those in, all those in favor of the motion that uh, our attorney read. All those in favor? Uh, all opposed? Very unanimous. Yeah, we've done our thing. Budget is on you. So moved. Same, same, same motion.
and includes the needs analysis for any increases that we need prioritized by those that mandates versus those that may be optional. I'll send you one. <laughs> I got my board over here. First thing you want to be still. We've got a call for him. We've got a special session. Just, I know. He's probably going to be back on. He's 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 um, but if, for the sake of time, would you all be a, agreeable to meet again together like this? Love to. Yeah. I, I personally, it's easier. Y'all will meet together as a group or meet each separately, which is easy. Well, we just want this next time the good guys and education to meet to sit on one side and the bad guys to play the other side. You don't want to do it like two. Save me a seat in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Whatever. Yeah, I'm going to do a question. Yeah, I'm going to do a question.